Lakeland PBS presents Common Ground, brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the Citizens of Minnesota. Production funding of Common Ground is made possible in part by First National Bank Bemidji, continuing their second century of service to the community, member FDIC. Welcome to Common Ground, I'm producer-director Scott Knudsen. In this episode, producer-director Randy Cadwell takes us on a tour of the Central Minnesota Barn Quilt Trail. A barn quilt is based on a fabric quilt block. You take one square out of a quilt and that's what you paint onto either a piece of wood, a piece of metal, or some people have even painted them on buildings. Normally they're a geometric pattern, but some barn quilt squares look like they would be embroidered pieces. Barn quilts were painted on barns many, many years ago. From what I have read, it was just people who wanted to honor women who made beautiful quilts and to decorate their barns. And so you could travel the countryside and every once in a while you would see a barn that had a barn quilt square painted on it. The Barn Quilt Trail only started in 2001 with a person in Ohio. She wanted to honor her mother. She grew up in Appalachia, and when they would travel to see their family members, there were no cars on the road, so they couldn't look at license plates like we do. So her mother would say, look at the barns, and they would find different kinds of barns. And then her mother made beautiful quilts. So when her mother was elderly, they moved to Ohio, and she she said, I want to honor you, Mom, by painting a barn quilt on a barn. They had a farm. And she was part of the Ohio art group, and they said, well, let's not just do one barn quilt, let's do a trail of barn quilts. And so that's how the American Barn Quilt Trail actually started, which is what we are a part of. They are in 48 states and in a few provinces in Canada. There's a few events that happened to get this barn quilt trail going. I was traveling across North Dakota and I was in a little hotel in the middle of nowhere and I picked up a brochure, a one page flyer, and I thought, barn quilt trail, what's a barn quilt? And as we were traveling, we saw some of the barn quilts on the barns and I just got excited. And I came back to Staples and I called up Lorna Weens and I said, Lorna was a quilter in our quilt group. And I said, Lorna, have you heard of barn quilts? And she said, yes, Lisa. I have two barn quilts on one of my barns. And she said a lady had stayed at her bed and breakfast who had written Every Barn Tells a Story. And so her friends heard about this and they decided to make two barn quilts for them. Contrary wife and contrary husband. Based on when you get married, you have to live with the strengths and the weaknesses of people in your marriage. And so that was perfect for them. And then the quilt club went on a tour of the barn quilts of Carver County. And so we learned more about barn quilts and then came back and about 10 of us met and said, should we do this? Should we form a trail? We contacted Susie Perrin, who is in charge of the American Barn Quilt Trail, and she told us what we needed to do. We needed to have a trail of barn quilts and a website. So then we needed to find some money. In talking about the barn quilt trail and the dream of starting that, another gal and I, both Marys, said, we'll, we'll contribute. So we started a, a bank account. Then Lisa applied for a grant. She's a great grant writer. And we got a grant through the Minnesota Initiative Foundation. And the grant was for the FFA at Staples Montley High School. 
to paint seven barn quilts for the agricultural area. And because it was in the school district, the grant was for the school district, it covered more counties. Todd, Wadena, Morrison, and Cass, we became a four county trail instead of just a one county trail like most trails are on the American Barn Quilt Trail. So we wrote a grant to the Arts Council, Five Wings Arts Council. We got the grant and that was for $5,000 and Staples Motley Arts Council contributed towards that grant. So it was called the Community Art Grant. It also allowed us to put on a kind of a information session where we could advertise and let people know what a barn quilt was. And what we did in that information session is we said if they were interested in making a barn quilt to put up to be on the trail, we would provide them with the stuff they needed, the board and money for the paint, we would reimburse them. We made sure that we had enough barn quilts in one concentrated area because the nearest trail is 120 miles away from us. So if they travel all the way up here, we wanted enough barn quilts in a concentrated area. So we started with the Staples city and surrounding area. And you can actually in 30 minutes now see almost 40 barn quilts if you don't stop. Well, they could be placed on a fence <laughs> or a house <laughs> or a building. And actually, we have some on our trail that are in windows downtown in businesses that they can't mount them out on the building, so they mount them inside in a window. So they can be mounted any place, and they look great every place. Normally, they're two by two, four by four, or eight by eights. And eight by eights get to be very, very heavy. We started offering classes for people to make their own barn quilt. And because we couldn't handle the four by four boards, we, made, we did the classes on two by two boards. At least there to give them a chance to make one and know how to do the steps. There are some people who have come to barn quilt workshops that have not quilted. And they say, I can do this. So when you go to draw these out, everything is on the grid, right? And these patterns, I draw them out. This is actually quilt paper. So each one of these squares is one inch. And you're doing it on a two by two, so you will double that number. Take your favorite quilt block and paint it onto a two by two. That's, in my classes, that's what they start with. Um, you take and paint it on a two by two and be able to hang it outside for many years to come. There's a lot of math involved in a barn quilt. You start actually in the center of the board because the boards, when you cut them, if you cut it a four by eight into two by two pieces, you're losing part of that board. And so you have to find the center and then draw your pattern out from the center precisely so that when you're painting the lines, they come together. Or you're painting a circle, which is even more difficult. Then you get your 12 on each one of these. Okay. Go around and hit the 12 inches. Just 12 inches, that's all you have? Yeah. Okay and then they pick out their colors. They tape it off a certain way. Tape off means that you take the frog tape and you follow the lines that you have drawn. You are only going to paint in that space and you'll only paint one color at a time. So you do very light coats and you may have to put two or three coats. If you're doing a dark color, we've had to do five coats of that color and then you slowly work out and then you slowly pull off your tape. If you pull off your tape too fast you may have a problem like I did when I painted my barn quilt. I was just so excited to see how it looked and I just ripped off the tape and a big huge chunk of paint came off with it. If that happens to you, you just walk away, take a deep breath and then you come back and sand off the edges very, very carefully, and then slowly just build that paint back up. And then you keep taping off different areas until you're finished with your design. Now some people, like in Carver County, they said, we do not seal our barn quilts. We want them to age just like a, a natural fabric quilt would age when you wash it. So some people do not 
seal their barn quilts. The Ontario Barn Quilt Trail says you need to seal your barn quilts, especially if you live in winter weather. So I always say to people, you get to decide. Anybody can do that as long as they're patient. You know, there's lots of steps and drying time. There's a lot of measuring and taping off and, you know, we just look at a quilt block in, a, in the books and go from there. If I can do it, anybody can do it. I'm thinking of a gentleman who came to one of the barn quilt workshops out at Old Wadena and he has made some of the most elaborate barn quilts on our trail. I think one has 43 colors on it. Can you imagine 43 colors? I painted a, a two by two and I liked it. And I thought, well, maybe that's something I want to do. Well, the next one that I did was that big one that you see over my shoulder and it's called the painter's palette. So it took a little bit of geometry and grafting to draw it out. It was just something that struck me as something, uh, a challenge to do. And from there, it's just blossomed out into other things. That one there has so many lines that interconnect that you have to be so precise when they meet. So when you go to draw it out, if it isn't right, you have to start over. So do a lot of easy ones first. Some people say they really can't do it. So then we give them some ideas of people who will make barn quilts for them. Can you tape off anything else? Do you know? Yeah, yeah, we can, because right here. So maybe we could look at your design and see if there's another color we can work around. Lisa comes to me from the Barton Quilt Trails. She's the one that goes out to the various businesses and if they would want a quilt for the Barton Quilt Trail. She would give them ideas or they have ideas. A lot of businesses would want to incorporate their logo colors or their community colors and decide the colors that they want for their quilt. When they come in, they get the design that the Barn Quilt Trail has established for a certain business. Then they need to, in a plan or graph paper, they measure everything out so they know how their quilt needs to measure out on a four by four board they figure out their colors. Then that's when I give them the board and they start drawing it out from there. And then you have to put in all of the shapes. You have to make sure they're perfect. They can't be like slightly off. And then you tape it down and then you have to use a razor to make sure the paint won't leak through. And then you paint and you peel off the tape and then sometimes the paint will come off too. And then you got to fix that up. And then, yeah, it just layers, layers and then, yeah. This project, I know that it's been done for a couple years now, and it's like just a beautiful way to give back to the community. So, yeah. Yeah, it's really fun. I think it's really sweet. I like that we get to decorate the town and add a little bit of color in some areas. It's little nice little touches. They learned it's important to be involved in their community, have things out in their community that they feel like they belong part of, they're part connected to it. And for years, they can come back and still see it standing in their area where they grew up. So that's great. Next year they will have made 50 barn quilts for our trail and the 50th one will go up in a park in Staples. Because they are unique and have their own little story, these businesses have really come alongside this project and been very excited to how to tell their story. They would love to see what the designs are and figure out how they can communicate who they are and what their business represents in a form of art. And that's one of the things we love about our barn quilt trail because we love to tell stories. For instance, we made a barn quilt for Long Prairie and there was a pattern called Prairie Flower. Well, that fit right into their prairie name. We made another one for Harmony Park and there's a barn quilt square called Harmony Square. And so they chose that. Forest Haven kind of has a history with us. This pattern was very dear to me. My best friend was 25 years older than me and we were creative partners for many years. Around 2000, 
eight, she got into quilting and she wanted me to get into quilting also. And I was looking through her magazines and I found this pattern and I said, someday I want to paint this. Myrna, my best friend, and our mutual friend Carol came out to the open house and Carol won the grand prize, which was a reduced retreat for her friends. Unfortunately, my friend passed away that December before she was able to join us at retreat. So each year we had our quilting retreat and different people would come and go and Melissa came. She brought her paints. <laughs> and I was like, I want to paint too, because I'm really <laughs> not into the quilting. But this was a, a passion and that we were able to do it together. It brings back that passion I had with my best friend where we did all these creative projects throughout our friendship and just kind of in her memory. I have the friendship star on my house and I chose it because I came to Staples for two years. I was going to live here for two years and then go back to the University of Minnesota, the metropolitan area, but I met my husband, I met a lot of wonderful friends, and so Staples became my home. So the Friendship Star made sense for me to choose that as a, as a pattern. My particular barn quilt is a maple leaf because we have maples on our road and they're beautiful in the fall and I just felt that that was appropriate for, for where I live. The barn quilt that's behind you is patchwork crazy. When I met Tom, he had three children. So the top colors represent the three children from his previous life. The yellow is my favorite color, so that represents Tom and I. And the bottom are, the, are our younger two children. And my mother said, you're crazy to marry this guy. He just wants you to babysit. And I said, well, I think he loves me too. So it was fun for us to make that because it was a family project and each child got to pick out the color that was their favorite. And I made it with, with the children, I made it with the grandchildren, and my mom even helped make it. And she was the one that said I was crazy for marrying Tom. <laughs> Well, we came up with the eight uh, points. We call it Claire Mar Family Eight because there's six kids and the two of us. So we've got the eight points and then we've got them divided. We have 16 grandchildren. So each of those and the divided uh, stars, the different colors represent the 16 grandchildren. And then it looked kind of plain. We were trying to do it real simple because neither of us you know, are artists or have done anything like this before. Clarence got the idea we should put a star in the middle with the five uh, spouses of our of our children and so that's what we did except now our 52 year old son got married now in May and so we should have a six star <laughs> so we don't know yet what to do about that but that's what the the design is about I love the one about the storm at sea the lady who said her husband was in the Navy and so she wanted to make a barn quilt for him. She didn't make it, she hired somebody else to do it. And he got so sick of navy blue, they made the barn quilt green and white. It's just a fun story and it's a beautiful barn quilt. My girlfriend is a sewer so I made her a spool of thread. My mom loves birds, so I did her the cardinal. And you know, as many different reasons for making them and then coloring what goes good with their house. Some barn quilts are made in memory of people, like the one that they made for Lorna and Mel Ween. They were made for their birthdays. And of course now one person has that up in honor of Lorna Ween's because she passed away. Sometimes I drive through small towns and I think, what do people do in those towns? And this brings people here and they can see that we have free public art that you can see on your own or with a group of people in your car. And also on this little 30 minute trail I put together, I've added some little things like, go out to McGivern Park and at McGivern Park, you can get out of the car and see the Crow Wing River. You could go to Living Legacy Gardens, see the two barn quilts there, get out and tour the, the park there that have zone three flowers that grow in this area of the state. 
Or if you like local artists, stop at True Value. They have a section called Truly Local, where all these local artists have made things that you can buy pottery and jewelry and just fun things like that. It gets people out of the metro area and sees that there really is a life in these communities. And we love our communities, we love our art, and we're proud of, of what we do. Community got together and they started this barn quilt initiative. And because so many in our own community were a part of this new kind of art form and initiative, we decided to partner with them as a tourism industry partner because it was a beautiful way to get people to stop in off of 10 and check out our community and see different aspects of our community that otherwise they wouldn't normally come that far or that deep into our town. I had just got a call from some people from New Prague and they want to come up and view the trail and they're so excited about coming to a a rural area to see the barn quilts. I know someone just moved to Staples and she was walking around and looking at these and she called me and she said, what are these barn quilts? And so I told her the story of how we got started and she said she wanted to have one made. So I gave her the name of someone who could make one for her. <laughs> I encourage people to get the map and if they go to the Staples Depot there's actually a section that can be added to that map because since the brochure map was published we've added well by next summer there'll be 30 more barn quilts so you know it's ever evolving you never do a barn quilt trail with just one person it takes a whole group of people, and we have been so fortunate. Staples Motley Community Foundation, Staples Motley Arts Council, the individuals that came and painted our barn quilts, volunteers, people I'd never met before came and painted, people who wanted to make barn quilts, and we paid stipends for them out of some of the grants. They made barn quilts for our trail. Pam Collins, the first artist who worked with us. Mary Spurley, who gave us $100 to help us get started. Uh, Mary Noska, all the founding people, the the Peacemakers Quilt Club, Beth Kern, who made our icons. And of course, I can't forget our website designer, Sarah Dregney and J&J &J Solutions, and Lisa Jenkins, who put together both of our bark quilt brochures. So, so many people. Of course, the Staples Motley Art Students and Jill Schneider. How could we do this without her? Berkotchik Electric, Todd Wadena, Cooperative put up the eight by eights. You, you need a bucket truck to put those up. And they came out on, when they had spare time, they would come and help put up the eight by eights for members in their cooperative and Berkotchik Electric put up, helped us put the last one up in, in Motley. So many, so many people. Well, we're a four county trail. We will have 130 barn quilts. That's great for a one county trail. We need way more barn quilts on the trail. So we are expanding out. As we're making more barn quilts with our nonprofit, we are making them for Long Prairie, Pillager, Wadena, Browerville, Eagle Bend. We need to get some up into Walker, more into Little Falls. We also get people on the website will say, will you please add this barn quilt to the trail? And I have to say, I'm so glad you have a barn quilt, but you need to be in Todd, Wadena, Morrison, or Cass, and it needs to be visible from the road. That's how you get on our trail. If they're interested in having somebody make a barn quilt, the best thing to do is contact me through the web page. I would say eye candy. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's what I called it when I first saw it. This is eye candy. Just to appreciate some of the artwork. Some people have been very basic and some people have been incredibly designed, you know, in colors. I think the people that make barn quilts get a lot of pleasure out of it. Some people do it because they just want to have their own art piece displayed. It's happy, you're creating something. And the students are so proud of their artwork that they put up and they can see on display for years and years. Art brings a sense of peace to you. It's an accomplishment. It's beautiful. And if people have a memory or a tribute to someone, that's the real tie, is the emotional love and passion for the art and the quilting and the creative process. During the pandemic, I probably appreciated the barn quilts more than ever. Because I could drive out to Dower Lake 
and look at going fishing. It just makes me happy when I look at that. It's such a fun barn quilt. And drive around and see the other ones. And art does something to you inside. It speaks to you inside. And this is free. You don't have to pay anything for it. Drive around, fun to read about the, the barn quilt stories on the website because they add another dimension that, that you don't get by just seeing the art. They make you happy. They speak to your soul. That's what art does. It speaks to your soul. Thank you for watching. Join us again on Common Ground. If you have an idea for Common Ground in North Central Minnesota, email us at legacy at lptv.org or call 218-333-3014. To watch Common Ground online, visit lptv.org and click Local Shows. Episodes or segments of Common Ground, call 218-333-3020. Production funding of Common Ground was made possible in part by First National Bank Bemidji, continuing their second century of service to the community, member FDIC. Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund, with money by the vote of the people November 4th, 2008. If you watch Common Ground online, consider becoming a member or making a donation at lptv.org.